welcome to episode 130 of the Graceful Tangle podcast. I'm Amy Kate. Thank you so much for joining me today. I have quite a few things to share with you guys this week. Um, it is also earlier than I would typically film. I have recently transitioned to filming every other week instead of every single week. Um, and it is a fantastic except that two weeks is kind of a long time and a lot happens in two weeks so um technically it's only been about a week since my last episode launched um but it has been closer to two weeks since i last filmed so kind of still working out um scheduling but today is wednesday november 15th i believe um when you're seeing this it will be the next tuesday uh the 23rd maybe um and it'll be Thanksgiving week in the States, which is so, so exciting. Um, so I definitely have a few fall projects to share with you guys. Um, I cannot believe that Thanksgiving is almost here. And then Christmas, we celebrate Christmas after Thanksgiving, but we wait for decorations and all of the things until after that day. Um, and it is so hard to wait. <laughs> it is so hard to wait. I love Christmas so much every part about it i absolutely love it and i cannot wait to begin celebrating but thanksgiving is really special too so definitely embracing the season um yeah so it's currently wednesday it is a cold wet dreary day here in alabama um i don't think lighting is completely perfect because of that but we're just gonna roll with it i have some time to film um and lots of things to share like i said so i wanted to just go ahead and do it um before you know, who knows when I'll have a chance again. So I want to just go ahead and do it. Um, but yeah, it is cold here. We are used to just warm weather in general, and it is in the 50s all week this week and next week, which is just crazy. Um, I love it because I love being cozy and wearing sweaters and all of those things, but um, it is definitely very cold. <laughs> Still, just, I don't know if I would get used to it. I would. I mean, it is going to be cold for the next few months but still it is it is crazy chilly this week um yeah i think that is it for all of the intro stuff um be sure to check out the description box below i will have links for everywhere you can find me on social media and pattern shops and then also links to some some specific things i'm going to be talking about in this episode um and be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and then hit that notification bell so that you don't miss out on any future videos um okay i think that is it for this lengthy intro so let's go ahead and hop into some knitting crochet content um with a couple of fo's <music> Alrighty, something else that is also really hard about filming not as often is I do not remember what I showed last episode versus this episode. So if I repeat myself, I apologize. If I forget something, that's okay. I will share next time. Um, we're just gonna do do the best we can. Kind of filming like on a whim today too. So it's bound to be interesting because of that as well. Um, anyway, the first finished object and actually the only finished object that I have this week um, is this sweater. So I am working on a few commissions. I don't do a ton of commissions, um, but I have a few lined up for um, this season, which is really exciting and I'm really grateful for that. Um, and this is one of them. So I'm not completely done with this. I still have to block it and weave in the ends, but all of the knitting is done which is super exciting. Um, this is the Easy Bulky one, which is a sweater pattern by Hoey Locatelli. It's a super easy bulky weight knit sweater. Um, I will say the yarn that Hoey calls for in the pattern is really more of like an errand and she does, she does mention that. Um, so I was originally planning on using a actual bulky weight five yarn for this project. I gauge um, checked my gauge and it just did not line up at all so I actually went down to a worsted weight um and it has been perfect so I am using or I used um Knit Picks Brava Tweed and I forgot the colorway name but I have it right here so let me just look um this is the colorway Wren and then it's just a really beautiful tweed yarn it's on a creamy white base with flecks of tan and brown and black kind of an off-white color as well um I love this yarn so much and it is just perfect for this sweater i think it's gonna um 
I think it's gonna work out great. I think it's gonna be exactly what the recipient was hoping for. Um, very, very excited to finish it up. I am gonna share them in whips here in just a minute, but I'm actually working on two other smaller sweaters to match this. Um, it's for the grandmother and then the two sweet girls that I sit for, which is so special, so special. Um, so it's a very fun project and a lot of work, but that's okay too. Um, Anyway, so that is my finished object for this week. Um, like I said, I believe that is the only whip that I have finished that isn't a design. Um, oh wait, no, that's not true. I have one more FO to share. Um, where did that, here it is. So this is a work in progress that I didn't even have started last week. I started and finished this over the course of um, like when I last filmed. Um, but this is the Polycardian which is a pattern by Courtney of I Love Tinderbox. And it is a super cozy cardigan. I held together Hobie Amigo and Fluffy Day yarn for this. So it created this super bulky, squishy, kind of mold look. Um, and it is so cozy. Um, and here's what it looks like. So I'm, I'm not going to put it on because it won't fit over the sweater that I currently have on. Um, but this is a really interesting construction. Um, you would start like with the collar and work a big long strip and then you um, join and work down half of it for the back section, um, kind of fold it on itself and seam for the side panels. And then you seam the pod pockets by like folding them over on top of themselves. Um, it's really difficult to explain, obviously. Um, and I followed it for the most part in the pattern. I did have to kind of like just lay it out at one point and just piece it together in my mind. Um, a tutorial video would have been helpful. I think like just even just like a silent video of just kind of showing, um, like what the construction actually looks like, but, um, I'm a visual learner. And so I think that's part of the problem for like me, but it is expertly written, super easy to follow, um, many, many sizes, great pattern. I highly recommend it. I picked it up um, during her birthday sale, like a couple weeks ago now, um, and I made it over the course of this last week. So such a fun pattern. Um, also really quick, I wanted to make it to have kind of something bulky and cozy to wear specifically this week, but really just, you know, for fall and winter as a whole. Um, yeah, it turned out super duper cute. So that is also done, which is very exciting. I love making sweaters and cardigans so very much. So I'm really excited to be in the season where I can actually make them and then enjoy them instead of making them, you know, during the summer or something and then having to save them for when it actually gets cold. But anyways, okay, that is it for all of the FOs. Um, let's go ahead and talk about a couple of works in progress. <music> In terms of whips this week, I have a couple to share. The first is another sweater um, from Two of Wands. So I have made a few of her patterns in the past. This is the long bag. Um, I have made a few of her patterns in the past. They're all amazing and so wonderful. Um, and this one is no different. I am making her, um, I don't have the pattern printed out, but I think it's called the Easton Striped Pullover. Um, I think that's correct. I will link it down below if you want to check it out for yourself. Um, I do not have a ton to share on this project, so it's going to be kind of hard to tell what it is. But this is a sweater that I'm actually modifying just a bit. Um, so it is technically constructed by working panels. So you make a front panel, a back panel, and seam them. And then pick up for the sleeves, but knit them flat. Um, and then like seam the entire thing together which is great. That is a perfectly fine construction. Totally could have done it, but I have done a lot <laughs> of stockinette lately with just knitting a row and pulling a row working flat. Um, I finished a sweater recently that was a commission that was constructed like that, or it was a cardigan, but it was, it was knit like that. Um, and then I made the, um, margin and pullover a couple, well, like a month ago, maybe now. Um, and it was constructed by working in stockinette for the front and back panels so i just don't love that method of knitting i i don't love you know having to knit a row and pull a row especially when you can knit around and you just knit and you get that same look so i'm modifying the pattern a little bit um altering it in such a way so that i can knit the body and the sleeves completely in the round. Um, I will switch to knitting flat when I get to the underarm section because obviously you have to leave those holes for the for the arms, um, for the sleeves. But 
I'm knitting the majority of it in the round and I am loving it. It's going to work out great. Um, I'm going to change the shaping just a little bit, I think, for that next section to accommodate this method. Um, but I think it's going to work out great and I am so excited about it. Um, so the yarn that I am using is, again, Hobie Amigo. I recently got quite a bit of this yarn. Um, I have a video where I share it all, so I'll link it down below. Um, and this is one of the projects that I got um, going to make. So I am using, like I said, Hobie Amigo Chunky in three different colorways. Um, I have color number 25. Obviously, it's looking a little rough because I have used a significant amount of it but it's this really pretty kind of greenish blue color and then this like burnt orange and then lastly this um tan color so obviously very fallish only issue is that as soon as thanksgiving is over i am fully transitioning to christmas and this sweater is not done and that is next week so I don't know if this is going to get done <laughs> to really wear a whole lot this fall, but that's totally okay. It will last for years and years to come, and I am enjoying making it um, regardless, so that's really fun too. Um, but yeah, and here's what I have so far. I have yet to finish even more, one full section of the stripes, so you can't even see all of the colors yet. Um, but I have done a tan, that, that, so constructed bottom up. So I have the ribbing done and then I have this first blue sh section done. Um, and then I'm about to go into more tan and then I will add in a stripe of the orange. So it's so fun, completely mindless, which I love. Um, I am working on a couple of sweaters still that I'm, I'm about to show for that commission and I'm trying to get those done as soon as possible. Um, so this is, this and like everything else basically has been on, put on hold a little bit so that I can finish those and just get them off my plate. Um, but still, I am having so much fun with this project and I am super excited to continue working on it. Alrighty, and then next up, let's go ahead and chat about this sweater for a bit because it is the only other project that I'm working on that isn't a design right now. Alrighty, so this pattern is not written in small kids sizes. Um, again, it's the Easy Bulky Sweater by Hui Locatelli. Um, so basically what I have done is just um, taken one of the girls uh, shirts and measured it to kind of get an idea of what measurements should I should follow. Um, and then I did some math, kind of used the pattern as a baseline to get them to match as close as possible. Um, and then went for it. So we're going to see if it works out. I am nervous, but excited and hopeful that it's going to all pan out how it's supposed to um, in the end and that it will fit. Um, so this sweater, the girls are three and six, and this is for the three-year-old. Um, so I, I think it's going to work. I think it's going to, I mean, according to my measurements, it's going to be great. Um, so yeah, I'm hopeful that everything works out how it's supposed to, but here's what I have so far. Um, I use the same construction that she did for the adult versions, um, which is starting on this back section, working up a panel, picking up stitches for the shoulder and working down, and then casting on stitches for the front neck, um, working a little bit further and then joining to knit in the round. So I don't know if all that made sense. It's very difficult to explain. Um, but the point is I am now chugging along on the body, which is the best part because I don't have to think about it. I just have to hope that it's going to fit. <laughs> um, anyways, so here's what we have so far. Again, this is the same yarn, Nipix Baba Tweed in Rin. Um, and it's going great. It's going great. Um, so I'm, I'm actually hoping to finish the body today. We will see if I can do that. Um, I have this sweater and then her sister's sweater, hoping to get this one done this week and then the other one done next week. Um, and then have them gone. So we'll see. We'll see. But, um, yeah definitely a fun project um and so special to be making them for the girls so anyway there's that hopefully next time i film i'll have both sweaters done that is that is the hope for sure Alrighty, and that is it for all of my whips that aren't designs this week. Um, but I do have quite a few designs on the needles, which is very exciting. So let's go ahead and chat about those for a little while. Okay, up first, design-wise, is the Genesis Blanket. This is a pattern that I have been wanting to create for so long, and I am finally doing it, and I am beyond excited about it. This is going to be the first design that I launch in 2023, um, which is going to be so fun. I launched my first ever design January 1st of 2020, um, so I am about to launch into my fourth year of designing, which is 
wild. I cannot believe that. Um, but I'm excited to kind of start that year with a Genesis pattern. I launched the Genesis Messy Bun Mini was my first design. And so now I'm going They're the day and night needles, which I recently published a video on. I will link that down below if you want to check it out. Um, but I have used these so much. They're my favorite wooden needles I've ever tried. Um, and I am just fully enjoying using them for this project as well. So that is that. Um, like I said, it's going super great. Um, I have enjoyed working on it um, every chance I get. Every chance I get. I have the pattern memorized, so it's really fun to just pick it up and work on it for a little bit um, in the midst of so many other things.
Okay, and then next up, design-wise, I am going through the process of updating my Success Socks patterns. Um, so this is a collection that I launched um, over the course of the last couple of years. It's just a vanilla sock collection um, in various different weights. And I wanted to kind of go back through and just update those patterns, um, give them a facelift, um, like cosmetic-wise, but then also... Um, alter the pattern patterns themselves a little bit to be even more beginner friendly than they were um and just easier to follow i think from from the get-go and um, that was my heart behind it so um I, that is what i am doing right now i'm making new samples with the patterns how they are kind of like double checking it as i go basically um so here is the dk version um i am using some nitpix city tweed dk uh let's see do i have my second stain i do this one For devotional today, I wanted to just say, share something that I kind of realized um, a few days ago, and I've been thinking about it ever since, um, and I just thought it would be, it's kind of a, I don't know, I, I just wanted to share it, so that's what I'm going to do. Um, so I have been keeping a journal for years and years and years. It's changed a little bit this year. I've kind of fell out of the habit for a little bit, um, and now I'm just kind of using, like, honestly google docs on my phone i just have a big doc that i'm using as a journal and writing um or typing um like at the end of the day most of the time um kind of using that method because the days are long but so jam-packed and it is hard to spend like the last 30 minutes of the day writing when there's something else i should be doing i feel like so that's neither here nor there um but needless to say i've been keeping a journal for a very long time and i was reading one of my old ones um one night this weekend just for the fun of it um 
and I came across um, an entry that I was uh, reading from, I believe it was July of 2020, I think, or 2022 now. Yeah, I think 2020. Yes, it was July 2020, which, as we all know, 2020 was a crazy year. Um, crazy year, you know, just um, in the world, also in my own life, I was a senior in high school that year, graduating and then starting college. Um, it was just a really crazy, big, hard, good, but hard year. Um, so it's really special to have a journal, kind of, or multiple journals kind of covering that year. But anyway, this entry in particular, I was over the moon excited because I was reaching, I had hit over the course of that week, um, 500 followers on Instagram. Um, and if you remember, um, or kind of, we, I'm still there. So recently, um, I think last month, um, I hit a hundred thousand followers on Instagram. So, I mean, obviously like if, if I wanted to, I could dive into the analytics of that and just growth as a whole on a social media platform. That's a different topic in and of itself. But what really stuck out to me in that entry was how excited I was because in that moment I realized that I was so excited to hit 500 followers and I was not, I was, I was equally excited to hit that 100,000 mark, um, which is just crazy. And I thought that was, that was so cool. Like I, th I'm not sharing this to talk about the numbers or anything like that. Um, I just wanted to use it as encouragement to be so proud of growth that you do experience, whether that's in something like this, like a, a business or something that you're trying to grow and trying to reach more people in, or if it's just something in your own life that you've been struggling and now you're not struggling as much in, or you've overcome it, um, or you have, have accomplished a big goal of this year over the past couple of years, or seeing progress in a goal that you're trying to achieve right now. Um, just be excited about it, be proud of it, um, and then let God into it. Um, I firmly believe that he, he blesses what you give to him. Um, and that has been my heart behind this entire business, these social media platforms. I have worked so hard to glorify him, glorify my father through them, through the way that I hold myself on these platforms, through the way, through what I share and what I say, um, and just kind of how, how I do it and what my, what my heart is and mind is, um, behind it all. I am by no means perfect. There were a lot of hard days when, you know, I'm trying to grow and I'm not seeing those results or, um, struggling with comparison or, there's so many, so many moments of, of hard things for sure. And I am by no means perfect. I'm so, so far from it. Just like we all are. Nobody's perfect except Jesus. But, um, I just wanted to share that because I thought it was really cool. And it's a testament to God's faithfulness and his goodness and how he's blessed, um, this little business. But it's also a testament to how, um, beautiful it is to celebrate every single victory no matter how big or small so i just wanted to share that as kind of a bit of encouragement um but yeah it was just a cool moment to kind of kind of enjoy on my own the other night um anyway in terms of a life update it's fall which i just love so much we are approaching thanksgiving it'll be thanksgiving week when you're seeing this so if you're in the states i hope that you are having a wonderful thanksgiving week um i have worked so hard over the past couple of years to always have a mindset focused on gratitude and thankfulness and it's just so beautiful to see that in my life every single day, not just on Thanksgiving. And that definitely has not always been the case. So I'm I'm just so grateful for that mindset. Um, grateful to be grateful. Sounds completely cheesy and I'm not really sure it makes sense, but that's kind of how I'm feeling right now. <laughs> um, yeah, let's see what else. Loki's going well. Um, obviously business is crazy right now because we're kind of, like I said, at the peak of knit and crochet season. Knit and crochet season which is so exciting. Um, and I'm, I'm starting a new kind of very part-time, um, job for lack of a better phrase within my home church, which I am so thankful for. It's kind of been in the works for quite a few months now, but I'm finally at the point where I can manage it and take it on and loan and then do it. Um, and I'm, I'm very excited and very grateful for that. And hopefully it will continue for many years down the road. That is, that is my hope behind it. Um, let's see, what else? Um, I don't know if you all watch Avenger movies. Um, I love them. So a little fun fact about me. Um, I went to go see the new, um, Black Panther movie that recently released, um, 
by now it'll be a couple weeks but for me it was like last week um with my boyfriend as a little kind of um uh, date together and it was so good i highly recommend it um i loved it um yeah very good movie and i fully enjoyed it so if you enjoy black uh, adventure movies as a whole i hope that you watch it and enjoy it um it was so fun to go to the theater as well it is not something i do often at all um but the experience is really fun so anyways i also at that movie knit for the first time in the theater which was a huge win for me because i was kind of I don't know i just it's easy to get so embarrassed to do it in public for me um but i first of all it was dark so really nobody saw it <laughs> which was great for me um but i knit like this sweater um i knit like almost the entire body of it um during that like two and a half hour movie um i had taken one ball of yarn to put into it and i knit the entire ball over the course of it which was amazing i'm so grateful i used that time that way um just got over my fear of you know not wanting to do that in public um and it was awesome it was awesome like i could totally see myself doing that again it was dark and completely stuck in it so i didn't have to see it anyway um kind of kept my hands busy because if you are familiar with just action movies in general um i knit much faster during those <laughs> those uh crazy scenes um and a lot of them so anyway it was it was a fun day for sure um but yeah i hope that you are having such a great week um like i said i hope that you have a wonderful thanksgiving and beginnings of christmas and just the holiday season as a whole i hope that it is a blessed time for you and your family um like i said i am i'm so so excited about it um and you go to work on all the projects um and release all of the designs enjoying it for sure um thank you so much for watching i hope that you are having so much fun with your current projects i would love to hear about them if you want to share in the comments or send an email to the graceful tangle at gmail.com be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and then hit that notification bell so that you don't miss out on any future videos thank you so very much for watching and until next time happy making bye